In today's show, I'm talking about Power Apps Time Tracking App. So it turns out that for the summer, Nicola wants an app to track how much time the kids spend on the internet, which is probably too much, but whatever. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through how that particular app works and how to do things like calculate time, come through you know, all the different little pieces of the puzzle so that you too can do time tracking, maybe for your kids' internet, but more likely for task at work, activities, assemblies, that type of stuff. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today, we're going to talk about Power Apps time tracking. And so the idea here is that we're going to work through the logic that you know I use in a situation like this, right? Because I probably spent more time thinking about how I would store the data and sort the data than I actually did on the mechanics of the app. But we're going to go through all the pieces with you guys so you can get an idea of how to do this. Because we've seen this before with customers who want to track, uh, track like activity of, you know, how long it takes someone to assemble some parts, or how long our service call is open, or how long you're on the phone, or how long the meeting lasts. Ugh! It usually feels like forever with meetings, but whatever. Anyway, let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. Okay, so over here on the desktop, I decided just to go with a little bit of a, you know, like I said, it's for the kids. Nicola really wants this one for our kids. And so, you know, when they go to start their game time, what we're going to do is come in here, game time, you hit start. And so this is going to do a few things, right? First off, it's going to kind of make the visuals of the app happen. But behind the scenes is actually updating a SharePoint list to record that this is an active session and when it started. So even though here I'm showing them a countdown timer of how long, or not countdown, count up timer of how long they've played, which we'll talk about why it's there, I'm not actually using that for the time at all because what will most likely happen is that, you know, if they're going to play for hours, right, they get in those epic Fortnite sessions, and, you know, hours and hours and hours later, they end up, uh, you know, wanting to stop. And so if their phone times out, if they leave the app, if the screen crashes, any of that type of stuff, you know, you can never count on a timer to actually count time, right? I mean, it does, it works fine, but if you leave the screen, it stops. If you leave the app, it stops. There's so many cases. So instead what we do is we log the now of when it starts and then the now of when it ends, and then we do the math to figure out how long it takes. So that's where I'm gonna drive home with you. Here I've been rambling for a minute, so I'll stop. If so, we hit end, you're going to see that my session lasted one minute. Total minutes used this week is 33 minutes and start a new session because maybe you want to, you know, you're going to stop to go to the bathroom and you're going to come back and start playing again. Knowing my children, they'd want to save those three minutes of time that they were gone. So anyway, if we go over here and look at the SharePoint list, we're going to see that what I'm doing is I'm logging the user, and I'm just using the user function and their full name. You might want something more specific, a user ID, uh, you know, the GUID, their email, you know. I just want something quick and easy, so I just do the name there, it's all me. And then I'm recording the number of minutes used, when started, when finished, and then session active. And if we go over here to list settings for just a moment so you can see it, you'll see that these are, you know, um, when started, when finished, or just date and time. Make sure that if, when you use the date and time, I screwed this up in the beginning, make sure you set it to date and time down here on the format. But so both of those are identical. And then uh, session active is a yes, no, which lets me do true, false, because we're going to see in a minute that I use that for a couple pieces. And the number of minutes used is just a number. So this is where I am dumping in all the raw data. So there you go, there's your SharePoint list. I knew you guys would ask in the comments, so I thought I'd just show you ahead of time. So how does this app really work? Well, let's say start a new session, and let's go up here and just kind of start at the start. Uh -huh. And really the start at the start is actually not the start button, but we're gonna go up here to app on start. And also remember as I'm going through all this, that if you want this app, you can just go download this, right? You just need to go to training.powerapps911.com, go to the curated library, and you can download all of my demo apps, all the videos, get notes, cheat sheets, all those fun things out there. Anyway, not a commercial. So on start, app on start, right? Remember, this is stuff that fires when the app is first loaded, and it only fires when the app is first loaded. So the first thing I want to do was set the of uh, our primary color, and that's the Nintendo Red. I knew I might want to mess with that later, so I throw that in a variable. And so everywhere that I use it, I'm just using this color code, uh, but it's all safe, so I don't have to remember that formula. I just say var primary, I get my color. So then now we need to get a little harder. So one of the things that we want to be able to do is we want to be able to track the time that they've spent on it cumulative for the week. 
And we think of weeks as Monday through Sunday. Power Apps is more calendar, it's Sunday through Saturday. But I didn't want that. I want to be able to calculate time that they spent Monday through Sunday. So what I want to do is get the start of the week. So I said, give me today. And so today is 6-3, it's a Thursday. And then use the weekday function to give me today, but today based on a Monday start. So that will mean Monday, I screwed this up last time I did this. Monday is a one, Tuesday is a two, Wednesday is a three, Thursday is a four. Okay, so four. So give me today minus four days. So today minus four days would actually take me back to 5.30, right, which was the Sunday. If I pull up a calendar here real quick. Uh, can I pull this over? I can't. Oh, how annoying. Anyway, you have to believe me. So 5.30 was the Sunday, May 30th. But I don't want the Sunday, I want the Monday, so I had to add one. So that's where you see this plus one. So this gives me the date of 531, which is the Monday of this week. Okay, a little tricky, but hopefully makes sense. So then I said, all right, go out to um, filter internet time log, that's the name of my SharePoint list, where when started is greater than the start of the week. So remember, start of the week was set to 531. And it's set at 5.31 at midnight. So everything they started after Monday at midnight, um, remember that's Sunday, you know, 11, 11.59 on Sunday, 12 o'clock midnight, that's the time we're getting, the very, very start of the week. So give me all the time from the start, uh, for this whole week and where the user equals the user full name. So that way, you know, if you think about it, I'm gonna have Chewy and I'm gonna have Ferguson, right, the cat, I'm gonna have both of them have accounts. So it would filter out because I don't want them to get confused with their brother's time, right? Each one's got their own time, so I'm filtering it by user. And I'm putting all this in a collection for a couple reasons, but mainly because I want to like make my app faster. So I'm gonna load the data from SharePoint once and then just use this for all my calculations. And then finally, I'm going to say set var record, create a variable, and what I want you to do is look up in cold time used uh, this week where session active. So remember, session active is a yes, no, which is a Boolean, true or false. So I don't have to say where session active equals true. Session active, if it's true, will be returned. The reason for this is, remember, we talked about the whole problem that they could be in the app, and then they could close the app, and they want to get back in, and they want to be able to end the session, right? That eight-hour epic Fortnite, Roblox, Battle Royale, Minecraft, whatever they're playing. And so... I wanted this to be able to reload, so this is just going to grab, if there's a currently active session, that'll load that into var record. Okay, so that's app on start. So then they say, all right, my app loads, I'm sitting here, yay me. Notice down here, total minutes used for the week. Oh, I missed. Um, so all that's doing is summing cold time used this week, that data we put in the collection, number of minutes used. Because one of our goals is eventually we're going to put limits in here so that you can't start a new timer when um, you've reached so many minutes or hours for the week. So that'll be a later feature we'll add. And then we're gonna use that IoT stuff that I just told you guys about today, actually. Um, we're gonna use it to turn off their uh, monitors for their gaming machines. So we'll use um, powered plugs. So IoT plugs, when they hit start here, we'll power up the plug. And when they hit stop, it'll turn off the plug. So that way they can't play unless the timer's running. Oh, I know, I'm mean, I'm evil, whatever. Okay. So what does the start button do? Start button is going to do two things for us. One, it is going to patch internet time log with defaults internet time log. So create a new record, set the user to be the full name of the user, when started is the now, and session active is true. So set that to yes. So if we press um, yes, or start, there you go, the session is active. If we went to SharePoint right now, we would see, let's do a refresh, down at the bottom, we have my active session. So we're now recording that time, and this is gonna to continue to accrue, right, whether the app is open or not. Because even though over here I am showing you a timer counter, and which we'll talk about how I do that in just a second, we're not gonna use the timer because the timer is unreliable in these scenarios. So what is that doing? So if you remember here when we hit start, so we patched this and we saved it to var record. Remember, this is grabbing the record we just created and storing it in that variable so we can use that. And so then now, if we look, uh, we also set var timer start to true. So this creates a variable and just sets it to true because hidden at the bottom of the screen is a timer whose visible is off. And so with that timer's visible of off, if you look um, 
down here, it's start property right here is set to var timer start. So by toggling that variable to true, then the timer automatically starts. So that's how the timer is showing up. And so if we look at this label, it is just showing me the timer's currently val current value because that value is in milliseconds divided by a thousand. And so that's how it's showing them the amount of time they've played. So just a little hack to give them the visual, but we're not gonna use it, we're just, we're just showing it. You'll also notice here we have a label your session started at. And so then this is just the same thing. We're using that var record that we just patched and we're just displaying the hours and minutes so the kid has a visual of when they started. Okay, so that is how we start the tracking. And so then now when we end the tracking, what are we gonna do? You probably can guess, we're gonna stop the timer, right? So we just change that var timer start to false. That will stop the timer. Then we set var record, so we're going to patch again. We're gonna patch internet time log var record. We're gonna patch the record we just created because what we wanna do is we wanna set when finished to now. Number of minutes used is going to be when started minus now in minutes. So we're using a date diff function to calculate, but we're not, once again, we're not using the timer, we're using the value of start minus the current time, and that's how we're calculating the number of minutes. And then we're setting session active to false. So if we hit play, notice the timer, right? Remember timers are real fragile, so it stopped. But if we end here, so our session lasted three minutes. I talked for three minutes, sorry. So what else does in do? And then finally, it recollects the time. So it just goes back out to SharePoint um, and recollects the, the internet time log of when started greater than this week. Oh, I have a bug. And I added this right before we started recording. And for that user, right? So that way, Ferguson versus Chewy, Right, you like how I use animal names for my children? Yeah, I do too. Um, those aren't my kids' real names, by the way. Did you figure that out? You probably did. Um, anyway, so then that recreates the collection with the latest data. Technically speaking, I could have patched the collection and added the data, but I thought that was a little too complicated for this app for you guys, so I didn't, but there are better ways to do this than going back to SharePoint to get all the data again. So then that's how those two work. And then finally, you know, your last session, so var record number of minutes used equals minutes. So that was three minutes. Um, start a new session. This sets our variable back to blank, resets our timer. Because you notice these buttons keep graying out. So if you look at these different buttons, they're display modes. You know, so his display mode, if var record is completely blank, then just don't show me anything. Awesome. Or, or sorry, I mean, make this button available. Sorry, if the variable is blank, that means they don't have a current session going, so this button should be clickable, so that's why it's in edit mode. And if we click in here, you'll see the long form of all those. The end button, its display mode, is only if, ah, sorry, wrong thing. Click better, Shane. His display mode is if the session is active. So if our record has data and the session active is true flag, then display mode is edit, if not display mode is disabled. And so right now session is not active, so that's why it's disabled. And then this button down here, I did the same thing, but I did it off visible. So if the session is not active and it's not blank, then, then show, uh, show this. And that's why when we press this, boom, everything kind of goes back. Uh, the labels all have the same logic for showing and hiding. So. And I just want to show you also real quick. So if we start a session here, so the session is off and running. Remember, this is the whole idea that it, that it ends. So if they just save and close out of here, they wouldn't save and close, but, but they close their phone, the battery dies on their phone, whatever it might be. So if we go back in and open the app back up, you're going to see that because of that stuff on app on start, it loads us right back into our session. The timer is not running. That's why we can't use that timer. He's evil. He's bad but it knows it reloaded var record, and so we can still end the session like nothing ever happened. Um, and remember, that was all because we took the time to put code up here to grab and do it. It's a lot like we do offline apps, but it's not offline in any way. I could have made it offline, but it's that same concept. We go fetch the data again. If there's anything to show, we show it. If there's not, then we wouldn't. 
So there you go. Hopefully that gives you guys some ideas. Uh, Nicole was very excited for her app. Like I said, she has some more feature enhancements, but I thought getting this first version out to you guys and just walking you through was a lot of fun. Remember, you have the option to go download it. I know there's a lot of moving parts here. There's no hard parts. It's, it's just a bunch of little stuff. And honestly, the longest part of building this app for me was figuring out how I wanted to structure my data over here and what I wanted to store, how I wanted to store it, kind of how I wanted to do it. Like you can see, originally I was going to do this in hours, so I had it in uh, points, so I need to get rid of these decimal points. You know, it, it's very common. It's the beauty of Power Apps. It's very adaptive. So, any questions, comments, you have ideas for summer tracking of your kids' app videos that Nicola might like, leave them below. I uh, try to read all my comments. I try to respond to all of them. I am way behind on a whole bunch. There's, I don't get them all these days, but I try. So, And with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem is big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.